Hello there, I'm Lucy Treacher and I'm going to be showing you this new piece I've written using the tongue, which is part of the Black Weekend. So the tongue collection includes BBC SO Discover, Olaf Arnold's Evolutions and North 7 Vintage Keys. And I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to use these libraries and also how you could blend the textures within the libraries. The tan is £100, £100 Euros, or $100, so you're saving 80% with this deal, and they're also compatible with the free contact player. So without further ado, let's listen to the piece. So I really like the way the forces of these different libraries combine. For me, the Oliver Arnolds gives it that raw emotion and realism. The BBC SO Discover adds a cinematic undertone and the North Sun Vintage Keys adds a sort of sparkiness and freshness. So combined, great tools for media composition. Let's first take a look at North Sun Vintage Keys. And I have to admit, I've never really used a clavinet before uh, in my composition. So, um, but now I'm hooked and uh, I really love the timbre of it. Sort of reedy almost in quality. So it works really well with the interlocking woodwinds, um, but also cymbaline like, uh, so it's quite sparky. Let's have a listen to this clavinet line. So North 7 Vintage Keys uses this eDNA interface and essentially what it does is it crossfades between two different sounds and signals which are up here in this bay. And what I've done is I'm automating the mixer so I'm going between these two different sounds. So I right click on the mixer and I can learn the MIDI CC automation and then you can see I've automated it here. So I think in context it works well, it creates something a bit more dynamic. Um, especially as in this section, it's quite exposed to the clavinet with these kind of cello stabs and little clarinet runs. Let's have a listen in context. <laughs> North 7 Vintage Keys is, I think, great for funk and jazz composition, but also for creating mellow and ambient textures. And I'm going to show you this electric piano that I've used to set the vibe in my piece. What's really cool with the interface is that I could change um, the combinations of sounds that I'm using. So at the moment I've got a more neutral sound. But I could mix it up here by clicking on these arrows and you can see some really different timbres, um, different amp sounds. Here's another cute one. 
so I opted for a more neutral, sustained sound, and I've used the electric piano later on to double the piccolo melody to make it sound slightly tighter and crisper. So this is one of the presets, uh, which is super ambient. And I'm going to play it to you with the piccolo. And in context. So then I'm using the clavinet to create these dreamy flourishes in the middle of my piece. And I'm using this preset, the modern Ottawa. So you can find all these really cool presets within the preset uh, tab and under pragmatic effects, as opposed to unpragmatic effects. And in here, we've got loads and loads and loads of stuff. And um, this is the Ottawa. And I've actually added a tiny bit of uh, pitch wobble to give it a bit more character, so have a listen to it. And I'm using another preset, um, which is the Whirly Lo-Fi. I um, love this whirl, it sort of sounds super warm and fuzzy. And this little motif is sort of um, giving it some rhythmic drive, um, but it's quite dreamy again with these more open chords. And in context. It's a really subtle element, but um, just adds a little bit more rhythmic interest. And finally, from Northern Vintage Keys, I'm going to show you my bass sound. I'm using the electric bass piano, a soft low fi preset, and it's got this lovely wobble to it. I think that your bass sound really helps to determine the character of your piece. So it's really important, I think, to have a little look around um, and try different things out. Um, and actually, in North Sun Vintage Keys, there are loads of options. With this bass sound, I could give it slightly less bite, slightly less attack. I'm going to increase my attack time. So there's a lot here we could change. We could also adapt these oscillators as well at the top. Moving on, we're going to have a look at BBC SO Discover. And BBC SO Discover is a great tool for those discovering the orchestra and who want to start weaving those textures into their music. What's a bit mind-blowing is it's super lightweight. It's only like 200 megabytes, which is a bit crazy considering actually how much is in there. So I'm using Discover to create these light orchestral textures, almost percussive in quality throughout the piece, which builds uh, towards the end. I've got these strings pits ideas, which are shadowing the melody and adding some rhythmic interest. <laughs> And I've actually added some echo to the violin part. Which might feel a bit extreme, but I think in context it actually adds a little bit of a je ne sais quoi to the mix. And this interlocking is mirrored in the woodwinds as well. Then I'm using my secret weapon, which is, drum roll, the triangle. And <laughs> I love a triangle because it, it adds so much uh, sparkle and character, I think. Let's have a listen to it in context. <laughs> uh, 
And towards the end, there's this sort of ritual six triangle moment. <laughs> and I'm actually doubling the electric piano melody as well in the Celeste. With a touch of glockenspiel as well, over that, just further adding a bit more magic. And then I've got these counter melodies, which help us to build up to that final section. Here's the string parts. So, so this is the violins. Then we've got the piccolo, adding another additional line. Then we've got these subtle brass ideas that are working underneath this. I actually really like the, the BBC SO Discover Brass, I think. It's really rich considering the size and the price of the instrument. And finally, with Booby Says So Discover, I want to show you what's happening at the end. I've got the viola and cello and clarinet working together um, to create these little runs and stabs. <laughs> And finally, over these textures, we've got the Olofarnel's Evolutions, which I'm using a bit more at the start of the piece when it's a bit more exposed. It's kind of in the name, but I think the fact that these sounds are evolutions, they move from different articulation sound qualities into another, and creates something really natural sounding and organic, and quite special. So let me play you um, the strings in this opening. What I actually did with this beginning was to record it into one track and then separate the notes into different tracks and then pan them slightly differently to give that depth um, and sense of ensemble. There are some lovely curated presets within the Olaf Arnolds, um, which you can find in the advanced folder. And then you've got all these different presets. And these you make use of the grid. If you're not familiar with the grid, what happens is you can assign different performances or articulations to different notes or ranges of notes. And these are the notes down the side and their octave. And then you could click and choose a different performance for, for that note. This means like if you were to play a chord, you could get quite different effects on different notes of the chord, which I guess gives a bit more diversity. And this particular preset ebb and flow inspired me to come up with this little tremolo idea, uh, which you'll hear in the beginning. I think is a nice little touch. And finally, I want to show you how I've used both the Olaf Arnold's Evolutions cello and the BBC SO Discover cello. And this patch is the cello subtle tasto to ord. So we're actually going from playing on the fingerboard, more or less, and shifting into more normal playing territory. And so let me solo this so you can hear how it sounds.
And I'm using a very different sounding cello over this. So this is the cello from BBC SO Discover. So yeah, we've got two very different cello sounds there. Olaf Arnold's cello, which is slightly grittier and slightly airier. And then the BBC SO cello sound, which is slightly richer. And actually, in the context, I think, works quite well together. So that was an example of how you might blend these fab tools together and there are so many possibilities here. This is a little reminder that Aperture, also known as the Stack, is here and you can get your hands on it if you spend £299 or more. And there's loads of other deals on the Spitfire website to check out. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you want to be notified, hit the bell. Happy composing.